Magandang gabi sa inyo lahat. Good evening, ba? Yes, good evening. Good evening sa inyo lahat, young people. Nashock pa ba kayo dun sa pinanood niyong video? So, so, good evening. It's my joy to once again be with you. Um, makasama kayo sa Bulita 2020. No? So, if you're a first-timer, I was here last year. And actually, I told, uh, I told Pastor Kevin, uh, I don't usually do a second time around. Uh, it's a personal conviction. But uh, alam ko pala na ata sila choice. So, nilagay nila ako dito. Now, but, but this evening, young people, no, uh, pinag-uusapan natin yung mga issues when it comes to depression, mental health, trauma. May gusto lang akong i-clarify sa oras na ito. I have a clarification as we begin. Una po sa lahat, I am not your resident psychologist. Repeat, hindi niyo po ako psychologist or psychiatrist or uh, counselor sa hapon or sa gabi na ito. Hindi ako psychologist who claims to be an expert dito sa bagay na to in the arena of mental health. I am the preacher of God's word who is to preach to you the gospel of Christ. <clears throat> Ngayong gabi, I realize yung issue when it comes to depression, hindi uh, ko alam kung ano ang hugot ng mga writers ng sumulat ng stories na ating pinapanood, but it seems to me this is very real. This is something that he or she might have experienced and I do not know how God's word will minister to you or perhaps yung iba man sa inyo dito represent kung ano yung mga bagay na napapanood nyo or you can somehow relate dito sa mga bagay na to. As early as now, I want to tell you that hindi ko man napagdaanan bawat experience na pinagdaanan mo but I can say I can sympathize or empathize doon sa mga bagay na pinagdadaanan nyo. So, this topic, young people, this topic is unique for a lot of reasons. And maglabang kita ko ng dalawang bagay. Even though yung Bible, may binanggit ito ng mga stories or ina-address nito yung expressions about depression, mental health. Let me remind you, young people, that what we are going to open tonight is God's Word. This is not your psychology book to treat every emotional disorders or difficulties that you have right now. Kailangan maliwanan sa bawat isa because if there is a advocacy, if there's an advocacy that I would like to take in, this advocacy is the sufficiency of God's Word. Pag nagbukas ka ng Bible, makita mo ba dyan na sinabi ng Lord na engineering yung course na i-take mo? Ay, or sinabi ba dyan na ligawan mo yung tao na makakatabi mo sa gunita? <laughs> of course, right? That is absurd. Young people, this is the Word of God. So, that's number one. Even though may mga times dito na it seems that it is addressing mental issues or depression, first and foremost, we must understand this is the Word of God. Number two, Yung depression has no step-to-step -step do's and don'ts dito sa Bible. Paano ba? Alam nyo, I am so fed up with preaching na sinasabi na 10 steps to avoid depression. Open your Bibles into this. You know? Because the Bible, the concern of the scripture is about the glory of God. And if it is about the glory of God, it is, if it is about the glory of God in the salvation of sinners, yung depression natin is not in the picture. But again, ngayong gabi, I am honoring yung issues when it comes to mental health. But I am not claiming that the Bible, I know the step-to-step -step things that you should do. And if there is one thing clear tonight, katulad ng sinabi ko kanina, I am going to preach to you the gospel of Christ. So, bago po tayo magsimula, uh, i-invite ko ang bawat isa ng tayo po ay manalangin. Father, we come to you with trembling. 
I must admit, I literally tremble right now because there might be a chance or tendency to sound as if I know a lot of things about depression. But if there is something that I know that everybody should know right now that the gospel of Christ brings peace. Father, tulungan mo po kami. The passage that we are going to read is difficult. Siguro magkakaroon kami ng reservations in accepting this passage. But I pray that your Holy Spirit will minister to us this evening. Be gracious to us, O God. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Unlike last year, no, uh, sinabi ko sa last year, wala akong talent when it comes to spoken poem. The bosses pa lang, alam mo na walang talent sa mga ganitong bagay. But, praise God, because Pastor Kevin looked for a picture, not a spoken poetry artist. No? Though I used Psalm 65 last year, and it talks about the, the love of God that is better than life. Kung meron man nakatin sa inyo last year, siguro na, na, naaalala nyo yung bagay na kung wala, okay lang din naman. And today, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be nice if we keep on talking about Psalms? No? Parang medyo bilong naman ako kanila, Johnny Paradox, no? nakakaya naman sa titik pa wete. But, and, you know, I, I don't preach just to belong. If there is something that I am, you know, I will say, hindi ko kailangan maging relevant so that people will accept my message. Because if this is God's word, whether you like it or not, the Lord be gracious to accept this by faith. So today, let us talk about Psalm chapter 88. Itong obscure passage, ibig sabihin, siguro hindi nyo ito natadaanan because in, in, in our churches, when we open the Bible, when, before we open in prayer, we usually read Psalm chapter 1, Psalm 23, Psalm 41, Psalm 100, Psalm 105, Psalm 109. But this Psalm 88, it, how can you say itong Psalm na to in the church? So if you have your Bibles with you, and I hope, pero tayo sa technicals, Psalm 88. And let me read this depressing passage. Ay pala, bibigyan ko na kayo na, na, na head start. This is a, ah, hindi ko alam, depressing passage. Heavy passage. O Lord, God of my salvation, I cry out day and night before you. Let my prayer come before you. Incline your ear to my cry. For my soul is full of troubles, and my life draws near to Sheol, yung understanding nila ng hell. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I am a man who has no strength. Ito tao to, hindi to positive mag -isip. Like one set loose among the dead, like a slain that lie in the grave, like those whom you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. You have put me in the depths of the pit, in the regions dark and deep. Your wrath lies heavy upon me, and you overwhelm me with all of your ways. Sela, my king's pause. You have caused my companions to shun me. You have made me a horror to them. I am shut in so that I cannot escape. My eye grows dim through sorrow. Every day I call you. I call upon you, O Lord. I spread out my hands to you. Do you work wonders for the dead? Do the departed rise up to praise you? Is your steadfast love declared in the grave? Or your faithfulness in the abaddon? of destruction. Are your wonders known in the darkness or your righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? But I, O Lord, cry to you. In the morning, my prayer comes before you, O Lord. Why do you cast my soul away? I like that word. Why do you cast my soul away? Why do you hate your face 
from me, afflicted and close to death from my youth up, I suffer your errors, I am helpless. Your wrath has swept over me, your dreadful assaults destroy me. They surround me like a flood all day long. They, they close in on me together. Verse 18. You have caused my beloved and my friend to shun me. My companions have become darkness. In other translation, darkness is my closest friend or darkness is my best friend. Preliminary understanding. I hope you can read it with me. Brokenness is a special God-initiated encounter that makes us cry out to God for mercy. That's not from me, that's from Reverend Arnel Tan. And let me explain. Saan ka nakakita ng psalm, saan ka nakakita ng book sa Bible, tinapos, at ang sabi niya, darkness is my friend. My friend, actually literally in Hebrew it means, my only friend right now is darkness. Not the ending word is darkness. Where can you find that in the Bible? Well, good news. Kababasa lang natin. Darkness is my friend. So, what do I mean by brokenness? You know, brokenness can be understood in such a way when the Lord intervenes in your life. Listen to this. With or without your permission, God does it. Ibig sabihin, hindi kailangan magpaalam ng Diyos sa inyo to say, Oy, bibigyan kita ng loss of a loved one. Oy, ma-experience mo na ang tatay mo ay binububug ka. Pwede ba yun? Pwede ko bang gawin sa yun? No. Because the God of the Bible tells us, He allows it whether you like it or not. Wala tayo sa bargaining position. So, brokenness, if we experience itong bagay na ito, this is a special God-initiated encounter. Young people, do not just quit your life. Remember, it might be an encounter for us to cry out to God for mercy. I shun yung mga preaching na sinasabi dahil anak ka ng Diyos, dapat happy lang. Put this in your mind so that we can better understand and shape itong difficult text. There are at least three avenues sa buhay na ito na dapat po natin malaman. Alam nyo, if you are fan of watching movies, sino na sa inyo nakapanood ng Dark Knight? Dark Knight is also known as Batman. You know, si, si, si Bruce Wayne, nung siya ay bata pa, umaten sila sa isang theater and then doon sa back alley nung sila, ay, sila ay umalis sila ay umuwi yung parents niya ay were met they were met by this criminal hinihingi ang jewelry hinihingi ang pera ended up na matay ang kanyang parents Bruce, Bruce Wayne so young hindi pa siya si Batman no? he cannot even defend himself he was so helpless during that time So, can you imagine this dark night of the soul? You are familiar with that phrase na yan, dark night of the soul. We'll talk muna. Number one, having you of pain. We'll talk muna. Life doesn't get better when we become Christians, right? Hindi naman umayos ang buhay natin kung tayo ay naging Kristiyano. So, I am preaching to Christians right now. When I say I am preaching to Christians because unbelievers, there's a lot of depression that you cannot comprehend apart from God. That's why I am saying I am preaching to Christians. Pero hindi ko po kayo iiwan ng without hope. So, hindi naman ang payos ang buhay natin. Meron man dito yung mama na naging Christian. Hindi pa rin. Alamak pa rin. Ang dami niyo pa rin utang. Right? Yung mga cash on delivery niyo sa Shopee, sa Lazada, ay nandiyan pa rin. 
ay nag-iisip ka kung paano babayaran yung mga yan. Or perhaps, katulad ko, lumaki ako na kung saan, Christianity would say, hindi ka pwedeng madepress ma because the Bible tells us, rejoice always. Again, I say, rejoice. Now, sa panahon ngayon, understanding depression, shampoo na lang ang rejoice. Right? Shampoo na lang ang rejoice. So, itong psalmist, itong mga awit, by the way, this is not David. Okay? This is not David speaking. Itong psalmist speaks of pain. Mga kapatid, ang pain na pinag-uusapan natin dito ay hindi yung turok daw ng karayo kapag ikaw ay magpapa-blood check-up, blood care, nasabay kagat lang na langgam. We are talking about pain that is intolerable. So young people, if you can just retrospect, kung pwede mo lang isipin right now, ano yung time na kung saan yung pain is intolerable? And yung pain na yun is the reason why you are so bitter, why you are so angry, and the reason kung bakit ngayon you hate your life. Chances are you want to commit suicide. I am alarmed because there are young people just to satisfy. Kasi sabihin nila, okay lang para mawala ang galit sa akin ng nanay o ng tatay ko. Saktan nila, but if they will be satisfied by hurting me, then I am okay with it. In clinical pastoral education, sabi nga nila, dead flag na ang bagay na yan. So when we talk about pain, it is not dysmenorrhea pain, ladies. We're talking, we're, it's not about the heartbreak pain. This is pain of betrayal. This is pain of losing someone. This is pain that you do not even deserve. This man is brutal. Verse 6. You have put me in the depths of the pit. Kausapan Diyos, ha? Kausapan Diyos. Inilagay mo ako sa pinaka, yung basement. No? Iniwan mo ako doon sa basement. Naiwan mo yung susi. Naiwan ako nakalak doon sa basement. You have put me in the depths of the pit. In the regions dark and deep. Ito pa masama. Verse 7. Your wrath lies heavy upon me. Ganit ang Diyos. Verse 8, You have caused my companions to shun me. Iniwan ka na. Okay lang, friends, para na kayo sa Facebook, right? But literally, iniwan ka na niya. Verse 9, My eye grows dim through sorrow. Alam niyo, there's this another psalm in Psalm chapter 42. Sabi nga ng mga awit this Korahite, yung, yung tears are my food day and night. Tapos grabe yun, no? Kung fasting ka, yun yung liquid therapy mo, yung luha mo. Right? So, let, let, picture how bitter ang nangyayari sa taon to. And perhaps you will ask me, Pastor, why is it in the scripture? Bakit hindi happy moments ang Christian life? That yung, what I usually hear from pastors, what I usually see doon sa mga Facebook uh, quotes, akala ko life is bed of roses. Actually, in Psalm chapter 39, there are these two Psalms, dalawang awit in the Bible, in the book of Psalms, na kung saan ang ending ay medyo <coughs> bitter. I'm not talking to you. No. Psalm 39. Can you imagine? Sabi ng mga awit, Psalm 39. Look away from me. Kausap ang Diyos. Look away from me that I may smile again. Diba? Lord, wag kang tumingin sa akin that I may smile again before I depart and I'm no more. This person is talking to God. Perhaps you would say, Uy, wala ko speak to itong taong ko ah. Let me rekindle yung ating lost memory. Have you remember Job? You remember Job? Si, si Job yung pag-uusapan natin. The wife of Job. Have you heard people saying that the wife of Job sinned and si Job did not? Because sabi yung wife ni Job, he, she is blaming God kung bakit nangyari to. Excuse me, 
Upon reading the Bible, there is no such case in the Bible that the woman sinned. Ten coffins kanyang anak in front of her. Tell me it's not painful. Tell me you will not say, God, why is this happening to me? So perhaps now you can understand. This is an address to God. So as we walk through this avenue of pain, here is God. Here is God. Absorbing all the bitterness, the venom that you are about to post on social media to run to your friends. Here is God. See, God has catch bright. No? Na foam. If there is one thing that we can notice in this specific psalm, actually, I really find it hard. I chose this psalm, then while working and doing my stuff in Psalm 88, may na pala itong kinuha ko, Lord. But upon realizing this honest lament, mga kapatid, young people, honesty with God, honesty with God brings authentic faith. Apart from suffering, namely, siguro yung depression, our faith is at best pretentious, mapagpanggap. Real song is written out of pain, not in abundance. Real faith, nangyayari lang in times of suffering, not in abundance. You look into the scripture, tell me. Tell me if I'm wrong. So, what I'm trying to say here, number one, so kung malaman nyo na if you are sad, don't just say I am depressed. Please, stop that. It's not an adjective na de-depress ako. De-depress ako. Ang bagay ng internet namin. Sana all may internet, right? So, can you imagine what I am saying right now? We have the tendency to invalidate yung ating pain, yung ating suffering because what? It brings discomfort. But to remind you, if you will just look into yourself, not everything that you are feeling right now is actually suffering. It is just discomfort. Right? The difference ako, kanina pa ako taas na taas ako, may si kuya sa inasal, ayaw ko refillan ng rice. Pang 13 ko pa lang naman. Right? So, are you aware how we use this word? So, what I am saying is, honesty with God, honesty with God, brings authentic faith. Because without suffering, I tell you, you say right now you love God, and when the Lord takes out the person whom you love most, you will say, God, I hate you. But that is the time where we can say, that is faith. That is faith. Ayaw kong tumagal because, you know, baka at the end of the night, lahat tayo depressed. <laughs> because Psalm 88 is just depressing sound. But I find the glorious God in this psalm. So, let me take note before I leave this avenue of pain. Depression is not a sin. Having critical mental health issues is not a sin. But let me say this at the same time. Depression is a joy thing. I'm speaking to you Christians. It is not a sin, but if time will come that depression sinks in and you think that the world revolves around you, it's not about the glory of God. You are losing your joy. Lahat na lang ng bagay may comment ka, lahat na lang napupuna mo, lahat na lang para kakala mo, uy, pinuriling doon ako ng kanta kanina. You know, ano ko ba yung mga taga-JICC na yan? Umotel lang naman ako dito, tapos paparinggan nila ako sa tomang magita ng kanta, ala pa ah. Ano sa pwede nila sa akin, nagda-drugs ako? <laughs> But, you see, having no pain is something that we do not want. Tama? Do you want pain? Nobody wants pain. But when God is involved in the picture, you are not in the bargaining position. It comes to you before you know it. 
Number two. Avenue of Grace. Avenue of Grace. Look at the first verses. O Lord, God of my salvation. He is talking about this God, this God who is making covenant with people, with Israelites. Ito yung God na keeping His promises. God who is a saving God. O Lord, God of my salvation, I cry out day and night before you. Verse 12. But I, O Lord, cry to you in the morning and in the evening. And then, makita mo, nandiyan na yung toxic. Now, what are we to learn in this specific psalm? Lord, open their eyes of faith and let them see the reality of this text. The grace of God. Let me say this now. Unsanitized prayers are avenues to experience the grace of God. I know there's no such thing as uh, there's no such thing as unsanitized the word unsanitary talaga siya no hindi ko lang talaga nilagay ng open and close quotation mark What do I mean by unsanitized prayers are avenues to experience the grace of God In prayer you can remove yung pagpapanggap mo na politeness kay God because it hurts so much Do you think God does it know kung gano ka nang gagalainte, nasisihin siya because of what you are experiencing right now? Do you think God doesn't know? So, unsanitary, unsanitized prayers are avenues to experience the grace of God. God's love does not change. Tama? Hindi ang babago ang pagmamahal ng Diyos. In our loud prayers, during desperate moments, because He knows our pain. God knows our pain. So when we pray in pain, God knows it. You know, upon, ex upon experiencing the beauty of Psalm, if there is one thing I learned in understanding the book of Psalm, ang Old Testament po ay sinulat sa tatlong part, no? The, the Torah, which is the first five books, the Nevi'im, which is what we call you prophets, the writing of mga prophets, and then Ketuvim. Ketuvim means writings. You know, what is something that I learned about writings? Yung specific na comment na, specific na portion na yan in the Old Testament Bible. Ketuvim, kung ang yung dalawang una is God talking to man, God talking to Moses, God talking to Noah, God talking to David, Ketuvim is the expression of man to God. That's why this is relevant. That's why this is real. That's why this is acceptable. Now, why do I say unsanitized prayers? Charles Spurgeon, in the book Spurgeon's Sorrow, depression of spirit is no index of declining in grace. It doesn't mean you're experiencing a bad time right now. It doesn't mean that you're experiencing this mental health issue. It doesn't mean that the grace of God ay nakukubos sa buhay mo. No, by no means, by no chance. The grace of God is abundant at times where we desperately need Him. Because only through the grace of God that we can walk this dark avenue and say, God, you are still God amidst of what I am experiencing right now. But God, ito yung gusto mo sabihin, I will say it anyway. You think, kapag sinabi mo yung unsanitized prayers to my God, mababawasan ang pagmamahal ng Diyos sa'yo? My friend, ang liit na tingin mo sa grasyo ng Diyos. What I am saying right now is, you do not even understand what the grace of God means. So the grace of God is this. I will pray my unsanitized prayer. God will hear it because He is gracious to me. His love for me will not change and yet my venoms are released. That is the avenue of God's grace. Depression can so vandalize yung ating joy and sense of God that no promise of His can comfort us in the moment no matter how true or kindly spoken. 
Ibig pong sabihin mga kapatid, kahit nandiyan ang grasya ng Panginoon, hindi ibig sabihin noon, o wala na kagad ng depression. So what is the grace of God in this context upon understanding this text? The grace of God will help you to stand up, courageously walk, and see life in the lens of faith. That's why your prayers are real. That's why the time you sing this I believe, you really mean it in your heart, not because this is a confession, not because this is a creed, but this is something that you declare and you have witnessed who God is. If you will ask me, what is my difference with religious pep talk when it comes to mental health? I will say it right now. Everything is not okay and I am willing to say to you that right now. Everything is not okay. Tama? Everything is not okay. Kasi bukas, exam mo, alam mo, nababagsak ka. Sinto is real. Everything is not okay. Alam niyo yung iba sa inyo, nandito, attend ako ng brunita para mabless ako so that makapasa ako sa exam tomorrow. Palitan naman ni God. Yung, yung, yung result ng exam ko. This is not a message of positivism, but an avenue to experience your glorious grace ng ating Panginoon. And young people, I invite you in this avenue of grace. We can be free and talk to God. By the way, when we talk to God, remember you are still talking to God. Okay? But when you talk to God, remember He calls you His friend. Lastly, to look spoken forward to it. But pag inalingan ko kasi baka mawalan ng rocket sila Johnny Paradox, si Martin Ali. Last point, avenue of glory. Avenue of glory. A person, ilabas ang kanyang toxic Inanggap ng Diyos that is a gracious act behold of that glory. What happens doon sa tao na na-experience yung grace ni God sa kalabitnaan ng difficulties ng kanilang buhay? I'm talking to you right now. A taste of God's glory. A taste of glory. A taste of glory is not about being okay. Yung taste ng glory, it is more than that. It is a picture ng trusting kung bakit inalaw ng Panginoon na mangyari sa buhay mo ang bagay na ito and you recognize that you are not the center of the universe. God is. And then you picture a glorious God. And this glorious God, as we see right now, this glorious God cares for our soul. And He is walking with us. Let me stress. Let me go to this last depressing verse. My acquaintances, my only friend, my best friend is darkness. Hindi ko sabihin na itin yung kaibigan mo. Ay nako, hanggang dito ba naman? Kaya yung dismo, yung ugali mo. That's why God needs breaking sa buhay mo. No, hindi hindi yun. Kasi baka mamaya, you will get your cell phone, selfie ka sa best friend mo, you will post Psalm 88 verse 18. Dark is the best friend. Here you go. This word darkness and this word cry in verse 1, O Lord God of my salvation, I cry day and night. This is the same word or same words that were used and when Jesus came, Jesus prayed Psalm 88. 
You see, this picture, ito yung Old Testament. No? Old Testament is a coloring book. No? And itong coloring book na to, si Jesus Christ ang nagpo-color ng drawing. No? Gusto nyo magkakulay yung outing nyo? Jesus Christ ang nagpo-color. So, what, what I am saying, Jesus Christ is the real psalmist. Ang tunay na mga awit, the Psalms is the prayer book of Jesus Christ who sums up our darkness. Na si Jesus Christ praying somebody He is the faithful He is the faithful one in the midst of darkness. Open your Bibles in Matthew chapter 27 verses 45 to 46. Matthew chapter 27 verse 45 to 46. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour and, uh, and about the ninth hour Jesus cried. Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In this darkest hour, Jesus cried in the open, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is real darkness. God the Son was abandoned by His Father. But take note, ito po yung encouraging exhortation ko para sa bawat isa. He did not drift away from God. Ay, ginawa ba si Jesus Christ? Ang galing ko yung pako, baba ako dito. Ayaw ko na sundin yung will ng Ama. Now, here comes darkness. He did not drift away, but He cast Himself upon the will of God. Who among you here right now suffering depression and say, Lord, Lord, I submit myself, I cast myself upon you. Take my depression. And as I walk this way, I am assured, I am assured, I might be assured right now, you will not be taking away this dark light of my soul. But here's my point. Here's my point in Jesus Christ lamenting, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Even in God forsakenness, sa so palagay mo na wala ang Diyos sa tabi mo, let me remind you, He is there. He is there. One thing that we can learn as we expect you glory to God is that we can lament as prayer and not sin. Young people, listen to this. God honors yung ating lament, yung ating hinanakit, yung ating sakit, yung ating bitterness. You know why? Balikan tayo na po din, Psalm 88. Why did God allow, why did God allow na itong Psalm na to, mailagay in the Bible. Right? Kung kayo gusto nyo sumulat ng, nung may pagsusulat ng iyo yung biography, ayun yung tanggalin yung mga ano, no? Yung babaho ang hiningan nyo, mahitin yung kinikilin nyo, right? You, you do not want that. But my question is, why did God allow this in His glorious book, the Bible? Here's my answer. Would you please accept my humble proposal? God honors your lament because it is a prayer. It is a prayer. And prayer is the expression of a desperate man seeking for the face of his glorious God. That is prayer. Cut it short. Despair can be prayed. I pastored a stubborn church, Muntinlupa Baptist Church, and my stubborn members are there. <laughs> I prayed a lot of despair prayers. But you know what? Upon praying prayers of despair, the Lord teach me how to love. The Lord teach me the Lord teaches me to be gracious. Mga kapatid, sometimes, dito sa awit, this is the psalm na kailangan natin ipanalangin. If you are experiencing this difficult moment in your life, I encourage you to meditate on Psalm 88. 
But there is something wrong if you always spray some 88. And definitely, something is really wrong if you will not pray it because it is in the Bible. So I encourage you to pray. Why? Young people, I am preaching to Christians. Apart from Christ, there is no hope. You who consider yourselves to be seekers, who you consider yourselves religious, you who consider yourselves a devout Catholic, Iglesia, or whatsoever, here is the good news. Your despair is not because God hates you. Eh, siguro hindi ako mayaman, hindi ako love ng Diyos. Prosperity gospel, shame on you. God loves you to even put you there so that you may cry out to Him and the people will see your glory. So Christians, as I preach this to you, you stand up in your brokenness, in this divine initiated encounter with God. You stand up in brokenness May the grace of God exude, no? Umalingasaw sa inyong buhay so that people will see that this is not our home. There is hope beyond this life and that hope is in Jesus Christ. And that is the reason why in praying this lament, we recognize this is not my home. And forever and soon, I should say, and soon, my depression is no more. And soon my suffering is no more. That's my encouragement to you this evening. So if you consider yourself to be a person who is experiencing this difficult moment in your life, hindi ko kailangan pa-forward din kayo. It is not a sign of your faith. But I would like to pray for you right now. If you are an unbeliever, I will plead to God before you experience the eternal spiritual depression of all. The Lord will be merciful to you and save you from this terrible separatedness with God. Ay po ay manalangin. This time, O oh God, I will not pray, Lord, you are good. Because we have a hard time speaking that word good and attribute it to you when everything of life lahat na nangyayari sa amin is nothing but bad. But we remember this psalmist, very honest, very honest. I'm a pastor. And I must say, oh God, there are times that I doubt if you will really cause revival in your church. But that's okay. Because as you see me through my weakness, your grace abounds. And then I am reminded that is not my church, it's your church. I need to trust you, Pangayon. And the same with these young people. Some of them experience this terrible, traumatic experience. Na iba sa kanila, bata pa, Panginoon. Lord, you did not spare these people. But Father, I pray to you right now, would you please spare us with this difficult pain?
sometimes you think you're unfair. Those wicked people are prosperous. Those wicked people are happy. Those wicked people, they have something that we want. And yet, here we are, your children suffering from depression, mental health clicks. But we are reminded, we are reminded, this is not our home. Everything that they have is temporal. Compared to what we will taste and see in days to come, when your glory is shown before us, pain will be no more. Pain will be no more. This is a time where we endure faithfully. So, Father, as we experience this difficult moment in our lives, Grant us grace to be faithful Christians. If you are with us, then we who can stand against us. And if that is true, it doesn't mean you will eliminate our problems. It means you are with us and it is enough. Our doctrine of Immanence. And as we reflect, we'll say, Your presence right now, it may not answer all our questions in life, our problems, but it will give us comfort that your presence is more than enough that are answered prayers for the groanings we experience right now. God, you are glorious. Also pray for those who are suffering depression and yet not in Christ. The depression that they are experiencing is nothing compared to the spiritual depression that they are experiencing right now. It will give them more terrible news so, Father, I plead to save them. May your face shine upon them. And it is in Christ that we can see He was forsaken so that your people can look forward to that hope. We are not people without hope. Yes, we suffer right now, but we have hope. And that is in Christ. Brokenness is something that we do not want. We must admit. But in brokenness, this time, we cry for mercy. So that we can look up again. Oh God, you are the Lord of my salvation. You are the Lord of our salvation. Glory be to your name. Christ in my prayer. Amen.